So apparently there's a theory that's going around called the best One Piece theory you'll ever watch, I guess by Ohara. It has 2.1 million views. And wow, I'm actually so excited. A lot of my friends, they've been telling me this theory's crazy. And if you guys are new, make sure to subscribe because we will be having a lot of anime content, especially One Piece. So jump on board, man. Might as well. Anyways, without further ado, let's just get straight into this video. Have you ever realized that when you take the D initial and put it in front of the title of the story, suddenly it becomes a new word? Coincidence, you might say now. But when you take the same D initial and put it in front of any slobby that otherwise makes no fucking sense, it suddenly becomes another English word. Denies. Yeah, I know. Blew my mind as well. So now that I know that you're gonna watch this video till the end, let me tell you the crazy story of how the Japanese One Piece community convinced me that the ancient kingdom was part of Jaya, that it's now at the bottom of the sea under Ennis Lobby, and that Skypea and Dressrosa tell us what happened during the void century. At the end of all this, I promise you, you will laugh as maniacally as I did when I found out just how in your face this all might have been all along. Okay, here we go. Roger, I'm man, so Roger excited was to share this. One Piece wa... Oh, oh. In chapter Crazy 253, stuff, we learned that Upper Yard in Skypea actually used to be part of the island Jaya down on sea level. <laughs> When you put both maps together, they form one giant skull-shaped island with modern Jaya being the teeth and the legendary golden city of Shandora as the right eye. Oh, yeah, and there is a giant perfectly round gaping hole where the other eye should have been. Why is no one mentioning this? There is an ancient city in the one eye and the second eye looks like someone ripped out the one piece of the island that made the second eye of the skull. Wait, one piece? Are you telling me? I first stumbled across the centerpiece for this theory when doing research for my NL video. I came across this new Japanese One Piece YouTuber called Yuderon who absolutely rocks the Daft Punk mask and who has this crazy video about the true essence of the One Piece. Since I luckily speak some Japanese, I watched it all and it blew my mind so damn hard that I think I just sat there for like five minutes straight staring at my PC. Now, for whatever reason, this theory does just not exist in the English-speaking community. So I asked him on Twitter if he would be willing to let me share his thoughts and he got completely ghosted. <laughs> At least he followed me back though. Thanks. So in good old pirate spirit, I decided to share with the people what belongs with the people. Okay, so the first thing that absolutely caught me by surprise is how much more Oda seems to play with words, numbers, and letters than we English-speaking fans seem to realize. Best example that is actually also relevant for this video is One Piece itself. In Japanese, One Piece is written in the katakana alphabet as One Piece, but this is only on top of an actual Japanese phrase. This is usually read as Hitotsunagi, the great treasure of the One Piece, as in the One Piece of a whole. Hito as in one. Wow, However, this Japanese could also be read as Hitotsunagi, Hito as in humans, making it the treasure that connects all people, which of course One Piece is all about. Ooh. So as I was saying, the core idea of this okay. theory is that Jaya did not only lose a chunk of its land once when Upper Yard was catapulted into the sky by the knock upstream 400 years ago, but also 800 years ago, when the city located in the left eye was ripped out in the war with the world government. Which, when we look at the map, would theoretically work, right? One city as the right eye and one city as the left eye, making the island one ancient kingdom. So what's my proof for all this, you ask? Oh, there is a lot. First of Can't all, wait. the name of the series. One Piece, and there is exactly one piece missing in this map. If Laugh Tale itself was the One Piece missing from the former ancient kingdom, that would fit, right? No pun intended. Then there is also a ton of small hints regarding the island's left eye being hidden or destroyed throughout Skypea. For instance, in the cover of volume 27, Luffy has his left eye closed. And I noticed that the same is sort of true for Robin in volume 24 as well. We also have Pedro's missing left eye, Shanks scar, Luffy scar, Zoro Zoro scar, and go. the Jolly Roger of Doflamingo, a former celestial dragon where the skull's left eye is just literally stroked out. Now, the volumes surrounding the Skype arc are actually some of the most critical in the entire story. 
tons of important characters get introduced here. We meet Blackbeard and learn about the importance of dreams. We meet Bellamy and Doflamingo, who are also extremely relevant to this theory. And we see the meetings of Shanks and Whitebeard, as well as Ace and Buggy, all of which are super closely related to Roger, who, by the way, decided to leave a little message on the Poneglyph in Shandora out of all places he could have done so. But the person most connected to Roger in a way that we meet in this arc is none other than Mont Blanc Nolens. He's a direct parallel to Roger, and their connection is one big hint that Jaya was the ancient kingdom and that Love Tale is its missing part. <laughs> Noland is basically Roger, but in many ways reverted. Both of them were very powerful, free-spirited adventurers. This panel here, where only Nolan can hear the sound of the bell, strongly suggests that just like Luffy and Roger, he had the voice of all things. Both of them found legendary places, Shandora and Love Tale. Both came back with no evidence, and both were sentenced to death and executed. However, here the stories start to invert each other. While Nolan was deemed a liar for his speech, Roger sparked a new era of piracy. Nolan didn't know the way back to Shandora, but Roger did know the way to Love Tale. Nolan cried while Roger laughed. And Nolan actually told the truth in the end as the City of Gold was real, while Roger sort of lied as the core of the One Piece is not gold and silver. And so given all these parallels, wouldn't it make a ton of sense that Nolan found the city of the right eye, while Roger found the one on the left? In Mock Town, at the beginning of the arc, Bellamy makes fun of dreamers and says that the era of dreams is over. He explicitly names the Golden City and the One Piece as two such delusions. And yet, as you very well know, the arc ends by Luffy ringing the golden bell, proving that the Golden City was there all along. <laughs> Well, wouldn't it be extremely fitting then, even ironic, if the One Piece, the second location of dreams, used to be in the very same spot that Bellamy used to make fun of both of them? Further, when we reach the ruins of Shandora, Robin explicitly states that there is no doubt that this city fought against the enemy in the war. <laughs> Well, if Shandora was part of the Ancient Kingdom, that would only be logical then, wouldn't it? Not only as an ally, but as a part of the whole. Also, we can't ignore the fact that Shandora is the only place we know of where the ancient script found on the Poneglyphs is actually used as the regular writing system found on the buildings and walls there. And so since we know that the Kozuki clan were the ones who actually created the Poneglyphs for the Ancient Kingdom, and that this script is used very casually here, wouldn't the easiest explanation explanation be that Shandora was part of the Ancient Kingdom? And given recent events, wouldn't that also explain why the Sun God, who we now know as Nika, is heavily referenced here by the people as well? We even see Luffy in the exact same pose as him. And when I saw that panel of Nika, I immediately thought of the Shandian soldiers. And since Nika and Joy Boy, both names associated with laughter, quite possibly describe the very same person from 800 years ago, wouldn't it make sense that these traditions live on in because it was once part of this one ancient kingdom. And then I thought to myself, oh, but the sun isn't the only majorly important symbol in the story, is it? One of the most consistently returning themes in One Piece is also the moon. It's everywhere, and I can't begin to count all the significant things that happened under a full moon in the story. The sun and the moon obviously go hand in hand in pretty much any mythology. On Zo, another ally of the ancient kingdom, we even get Guardians of the Night and the Day with Nekuma Mushi and Inuarashi. So wouldn't it make sense for the right city to be the city of the sun and the, the left city the to moon. be the city of the moon? By the way, I just looked it up. In Teotihuacan, one of the ancient cities of Mexico that Chandora is based on, there actually is a pyramid of the sun no. and a pyramid of the moon. The very same moon, by the way, which is part of the Kozuki heritage and whose crest is pretty much the same as the Shanians. Oh and while I was God. thinking this, I found this crazy color spread of chapter 269, where we see the straw hats in a place looking suspiciously like Wano, surrounded by the birds from the Kozuki crest. A crest that, by the way, has also crossbones, but no skull. Okay, this is chapter 269. The last panel of chapter 268 is this. Yeah. 
coincidence? I think not! The inscription on the pillar that Robin reads in the ruins says, We are the ones who weave history with the sound of the great bell. Come on, we are the ones who weave history? Clearly, the Kozuki. And it also reminds me of this verse from Bing Sake that says, <laughs> Goodbye harbor of the spinning village. On top of that, I then remembered that the Shandians came down from the moon to Jaya with very advanced technology, making them the perfect candidates to be a part of an ancient, powerful kingdom. Next up is a concept that I learned from Yuderon that changed my perspective on Oda's writing completely. According to him, Oda absolutely loves playing with the numbers of the chapters to either describe what is gonna happen in this chapter or even hide a deeper message. One really interesting and way too specific date that Oda gives us in the story is the 12th of May 1122, the day that Noland discovers Jaya. Oda usually never gives us specific dates for anything, so why now? Generally, dates in Japanese are written as year, month, day. So 1122, 512. Now, if you take the individual numbers and the pronunciation from both Japanese and English, you get this. The one is here. Interestingly enough, the volume title of 31 is also Kokoniru. I am right here. So, is this the One Piece literally telling us that it's right here? The next date we get is the 16th of November, 1127, five years later, when Shandora gets knocked into the sky. Same game. This time we get Hitotsunagi in Torodoroku. Do you remember? Hitotsunagi is the One Piece, and in is the sound of a bell. Thus, this date reads, the One Piece roars with the sound of a bell. The bell coincidentally being part of the unfulfilled promise to Noland to ring the bell that was then inherited over generations until Luffy was finally the one to fulfill it. Another promise that was unfulfilled and inherited to future generations was that of Joy Boy, not 400, but 800 years ago. So, when you subtract another 400 years back to the Void Century from Nolan's two dates 400 years ago, 1122 and 1127 minus 400, you get the years 722 and 727. The first possibly marking the promise by Joy Boy to the Mermaid Princess, and the second might be the year of destruction of the Ancient Kingdom. I know we're really deep into this right now, but stay with me because what comes next absolutely blew my mind. When you take these two Two numbers 722 and 727 and look at the corresponding chapters you don't get some random stuff happening no 722 is the reveal that doflamingo is a celestial dragon in this chapter he tells law about how the 20 kings created the world government 19 of the 20 families deciding to move to marijoa while the nefatari family was the only one who did not go the descendants of these kings the world nobles still live there today and so this meant that 19 of these countries had to elect new royalties and new kings, and so new royal families were established. As a result, the new ruling family in Dressrosa were the Riku family, while the family that left for Marijoa were the Don Quixote family. Ancient history. Okay, so anything else that might be interesting happening in this chapter? Oh, yeah, we have a literal golden bell ringing in close-up. And then there is Jala. <sighs> Do you remember Jala and her great artwork? Don't tell me she's yeah, gonna be the important. Either. I but hated her. This abstract masterpiece of hers here. A giant gate with two eyes. The right one, bright like the sun, is open. The left one, dark like the night, is crying. I think I don't have to spell this one out for you, right? This might well represent the ancient no kingdom being destroyed way. and ripped out of Jaya. All while Brooke is playing music on top of it. And we all know how important music is in the One Piece endgame as well. And after defeating Jola, he even says this. <laughs> No. No, 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 At the same no, time, no, no. the Straw Hats and Tontada start the battle to restore the honor of the fallen king and regain their freedom. Chapter 727, meanwhile, where the fight in block D continues. <laughs> okay, this might actually just be coincidence. We hear the story of Doflamingo taking over the country by staging King Riku and his men going against their own people. <laughs> 
と国中が恐怖に震え上がり陸王を心底恨み切った時だ The wordplay we get for this chapter number is Chi ni o chiru falling to the ground. Not only how Dressrosa fell, but also how the ancient kingdom fell. Jola even says that her cryptic art is meant to represent the tragedy of Dressrosa. So, also the tragedy of the ancient kingdom? Now, you might rightly say, Oh, Hara, if Dressrosa is the representation of the fall of the ancient kingdom, what connection is there between Shandora and Dressrosa? The Shandora has vanished while Kalgara waits for Nolan's promised return is chapter 292, titled Like the Half Moon Hidden by the Clouds. Again, the symbol of the moon that we can also find on Nolan's ship in this chapter. And the wordplay for this chapter is Skini Two Moons. In other words, two half moons making a hole, making the sun. Wouldn't it also make a lot of sense that the D is actually a half moon? 800 years ago, the people of the sun were overthrown and the done piece became the one piece. A circle became half a circle and became eventually a letter. The will of D then being to be made one whole again, becoming the sun, becoming one piece. Okay, I thought to myself at this point, this already makes way too much sense. But now on to the biggest mystery of it all. Why do I think that the One Piece and or Laugh Tale is at Ennis Lobby? The same Ennis Lobby, by the way, whose main villain is called Rob Lucci, the one who robs the light. Just this saying. Flight of okay, also. so we have One Piece that when adding the D2, it gives us Done Piece. A done piece. The first thing that connects Anislabi to this is that it also takes a D. <laughs> Suddenly, Anislabi that makes no sense as a word becomes denies. Denies what? I thought, but it's probably more of a denies who. When you really think about it, Ennis Lobby is one of the most freakish places we've ever visited in the story. And mm -hmm. I know that says something. It never gets dark there. We have the enormous gates of justice that no one ever seems to bother to explain really. It is one of the central government facilities, but it makes no sense that they would hold their mock trials on an extra island instead of Impel Down, for instance. Oh, and what the f is the deal with this giant hole gaping in the middle of the ocean. The moment I looked at Ennis Lobby's map, it just made a lot of sense that this might have been the missing piece in the Jaya map that we're looking for. Shape-wise, it absolutely fits. I also wondered if these weird ancient structures on top of the islands had any purpose for the marines, but it doesn't seem like they do. It looks so like those infrastructure from Sky Island, yeah. The actual ancient kingdom, the missing link that we were looking for. And then the government just decides to build its own stuff on the island. Is that why they parade the pirates they capture over this island? As a forgotten tradition to remember their glorious victory of the pirate kingdom they fought against? I mean, it is called the Island of Justice after all. Shiho no Shima in Japanese. And here I'm a little bit proud of myself because I wondered that if there were were multiple readings to the word for one piece, there might be more to this as well, right? So here's what the dictionary told me. Shiho, obviously with different kanji combinations, next to justice, can also mean one, four directions, two, secret information, and three, greatest treasure. Ugh, okay. So we have the island of four directions, just like the four road poneglyphs you need to find Love Tail. The <coughs> island of secret information, just as the forgotten history located on Love Tail. And finally, the island of the greatest treasure, the One Piece itself. So as a result, the government has made this one of the most guarded places in the world, where no one can sneak in during darkness, no one can escape from without opening the gates of justice, and that is directly connected to Impel Down and Marija itself. For Luffy, entering this island means declaring war on the entire world government itself. It's an island that denies entrance to the D, 
the sworn enemy of the gods. And since Anna's lobby is the arc directly after Skypea, wouldn't it be a classic Oda move for the missing piece to be right there? I mean, the Straw Hats literally come to save the one person in the world that can figure out the true nature of this place. This arc is all well, about that's, that's Robin facts, and her yeah. unique ability to read the ancient script and her search for the truth and how the world government is covering it all up. Hell, don't forget that this is the arc where we first learned about the ancient kingdom in the first place. We did. Okay, but clearly the One Piece can't be in a town full of marines, right? So where is it? Only one way to go. Remember the inverted stories of Roger and Noland? Well, Noland's city of dreams was pushed into the sky. Mm -hmm. But what if Roger's island got dropped to the bottom of the sea? So, hmm, let me think. Is there anything that might suggest that there's something at the bottom of Ennis Lobby? What? So the wordplay from chapter 727, the fall of Dressrosa, was falling to the ground. Did Laugh Tail literally fall to the ground? I believe it did. I believe that Ennis Lobby itself is the missing city from Jaya and that under the floating island is the island of Love Tail and the One Piece. Just like the hidden world under Dressrosa. No wonder then that Roger laughed when he reached Love Tail. He had literally been to the Ancient Kingdom before and <laughs> oh, no the Love Tail many, many times. Right in front well, of well, everyone's part again. Snowfor, and path under then that Roger Love Tail and the One Piece. Just like the hidden world under Dressrosa. No wonder then that Roger laughed when he reached Love Tail. He had literally been to the Ancient Kingdom before and passed by Love Tail many, many times. Many times. Right oh in front of everyone's God. noses. And the ultimate proof I have for this are Roger's very last words at his execution. The very words that start One Piece. <laughs> Again here, the secret lies in the Japanese version, a true wordplay in true Oda fashion. Roger says, Kono yo no subete o soko ni oite kita. I left everything in this world, soko. Soko in Japanese meaning there. However, it also has a second meaning. Soko also means bottom. In other words, the second meaning in, of Roger's last words in is, slowly. I left everything in this world at the bottom. All right, that is definitely the best One Piece theory video I've ever seen. I don't know where to stop, man. It was, it's just so much, so much to take in. Like, this guy's a genius, man. Bro, guys, check his video out and support his channel, bro. This guy's a genius. He actually might be more smarter than Oda at this point. Wow. So, so if this guy's right, Jay, they've been to this lobby. They saved the only person in the whole world that can read the ancient language. And that's where we got the flashback as well. Oh my god, no, no, no. Honestly, guys, I don't know what to say. But it kind of makes sense. It's It connects. Everything he says connects. Like, honestly, like the Japanese part, like all the Japanese stuff. I never knew that numbers had like different meanings or numbers could translate into words. Like, wow, I'm shocked, man. I'm, I'm speechless. I'm speechless, man. Wow, 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 wow. Um, I don't know what to say. I actually don't know what to say. I think I feel like... I don't know. I want to say a lot, but I can't. I just... I don't know, man. Yeah, I don't know. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big like. And yeah, go over to O'Hara's page. Give him all the support. This guy is amazing, man. And yeah, um, see you guys in the next video. Wow, I'm actually so speechless. God damn.